A cylinder is fitted with a piston and has an initial volume of 0.1 cubic meters and contains nitrogen gas at 100 kilopascals and 37 degrees Celsius. The piston is moved, compressing the nitrogen until the pressure is 1.2 megapascals and the temperature 167 degrees Celsius. During the compression, heat is transferred from the nitrogen and the work done on the system is 15 kilojoules. Determine the amount of heat transfer. This is the second example for the specific heat's main lecture video. The links to that 12-minute video, the other examples for this topic, and the other lectures of the thermodynamics course are found in the description below. From our conservation of energy equation, or first law of thermodynamics, we see that we are being given the work in, that we are looking for the heat coming out of the system, and therefore, all we have to do is use all the additional information to find the change in internal energy. This total change in internal energy is not the change in specific internal energy. So we are going to need either the mass or the number of moles, depending on if we have U or U bar respectively. Can we find the mass from the giving information? Yes, assuming nitrogen to be an ideal gas, and everything we've learned about specific heats is for ideal gas only anyways, we see that from PV equal to MRT, M is equal to P1V1 over RT1. But do we need the mass or do we need the number of moles? Well, this depends on the type of information we're going to get for the internal energy at states 1 and 2. Knowing that the most accurate way to find the change in internal energy is by going to the ideal gas properties of nitrogen table, we notice that what we can get from this is U bar, the molar specific internal energy, not the mass specific internal energy lowercase u. So we write down the U bar value at 167 degrees Celsius or 440 Kelvin for U bar 2 and the U bar value at 37 degrees Celsius or 310 Kelvin for U bar 1. Therefore, what we want to use in this case is R bar, the universal gas constant. With this, we find the number of moles in kilomoles of nitrogen we have in our system. And done! With N and the two U bar values, we find the total change in internal energy, delta capital U, and with the work information we were given, we solve for the heat transfer value. Alternatively, we can use one of the other methods we discussed. The polynomial fit for CV, which in this case would be longer because what we actually have is the polynomial fit for CP, and then we'd have to find CV, or the average value for it between the two temperatures. For that second case, what we'll obtain is the actual specific heat at constant volume, CV, not the molar specific heat, CV bar. And because of this, because CV is per kilogram, not per kilomole, we need to find the mass, not the number of moles. The R that we use in that case is not the universal gas constant, obviously, but the R for nitrogen in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, meaning R bar over the molar mass of N2, which we can easily look up for either a single atom of nitrogen and multiply by 2, or just look up N2's molar mass, or even better yet, just look up the gas constant for N2 from your tables. With the mass, and assuming we'll use the CV method, all we need to find is CV at 2, interpolating of course, then CV at 1, interpolating again, average them out, and multiply M times the average CV times the difference in temperatures to find that the change in total internal energy is 12.66 kilojoules. This is close to what we had before, but we'd get a slightly different value for the total heat coming out of the system. If you want to see some other examples in the specific heats and heat capacity topic, make sure to check out the links in the description below. You'll find the other lectures of the thermo course as well as other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.